Hi everyone and welcome to part three of Alpine Consulting Partners series on ODI. Today we're going to be talking about ODI variables and packages. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend that you review parts one and two of this series as we'll be leveraging several components from both of those demos in today's demo. My name is Peter Shepard. I'm a senior manager within Alpine's delivery practice, and I primarily develop and deploy Hyperion planning and S-based solutions along with the data movement pieces around those solutions. As I stated before, today's session is on Oracle Data Integrator. If you're unfamiliar with the tool, I would highly recommend reviewing demos one and two before proceeding with this demo. Today's first topic will be ODI variables. Now variables are tools within Oracle Data Integrator that allow us to store values that are shared across the application. Uh, oftentimes these will include things like common directory or file locations, email notification lists, or any other system variable that should be leveraged by multiple objects within ODI. The point being, rather than hard coding a value across multiple objects within ODI, being able to leverage a single variable and also allowing a variable to be dynamically updated based on the runtime parameters or execution time of a given ODI package. Today within ODI, I'm going to create two different variables, one of which will be static in nature and set by the administrator, another will be dynamically set by the runtime itself. Uh, to create a new variable, I right click on the variable section and select new variable, and then I give that variable a name. In this case, this will be a path that is set in advance and is the location of various flat files that we use within our ODI project. You can see here I've set a default value of the file location and that's really all I need to do for that, that one variable. I'm going to go ahead and create another variable here and this is going to use the MySQL database to determine the current date when the package is run. Uh, so you can see here I've selected the refreshing tab and I'm selecting ODI staging as my schema, which is MySQL. And I'm going to drop in a query which is able to pull the date from MySQL. You'll see here I'm validating that as a valid query. And I'm going to hit refresh just to ensure that I'm pulling today's date correctly from MySQL. I select OK here and I'm able to see from the history tab that the value actually did flow through within the value column here. I'll show you in a moment how variables are used elsewhere within ODI, but first we need to introduce the concept of a package. Now packages are really just a mechanism within ODI where we're able to collect the various technical elements within the technology and place them in a workflow or a sequence where one action kicks off the next. We define packages in a visual way where we're able to daisy chain one step to another on either a success path or a failure path. And as part of packages, we can also set up some basic file movement and notification functionality that will enable us to automate these packages down the line. In today's example, I'm going to take all of the objects that were created in demos one and two and add them to a single package, as well as leverage the variables we created earlier in this session to dictate some file movement properties within the package as well. I start by right clicking on packages and selecting new package. I then give the package a meaningful name and press OK. This opens up a working area for the package and I'm going to start by taking the mappings we created in demo one and I'm just going to drag and drop those into the working area of the package. You can see I do this one at a time and once I have these landed within the package I'm going to connect them using the OK arrow, which is basically the success path within the package. Now you'll see the first step here has this little green triangle, which indicates that it's the first step of the package. I can change the first step at any time by right clicking on the subsequent step and selecting first step, but for now I'll leave the first added mapping as the first step to the package. I'm now going to bring the procedure created in demo two over here, and this is going to be the fourth step of my package. And now I'm going to leverage one of the tools from ODI packages. You'll see here on the left hand side, I have this toolbox 
where there are various utilities that allow for data movement, checking of data, creation of files, deletion of files, and any number of things uh, that we can do within the file system or within a given database. Today I'm going to use the file move utility and we're going to use that to take one of the source flat files uh, from our mapping and we're going to move that flat file into an archive folder within the file system. So you'll see here this opens up a property section at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and rename this step from ODI file move one to something a little bit more meaningful. In this case I'll be archiving the inventory file which once again had been used as a source file in one of our first mappings. If you recall this file resided in C slash ODI file store where you can see I have my inventory and sales files as well as an archive folder which would be our destination for the file move. Now back in ODI I need to set a few different parameters that will dictate what file is moved and where it is moved to. To begin with I'm going to reference my ODI file path variable which cr we created earlier in this session which is currently pointing to C slash ODI file store. I'm going to use that as the start of my file name path and then I'm going to specify inventory.txt and I'll just hard code that as that's my source file. Now the target file I'm going to use the same starting directory and I'm also going to specify that it goes into the archive subfolder and now rather than just taking the inventory.txt file name I'm also going to append the date that we were able to pull from MySQL as part of the file name. Once I have that set I'm ready to go ahead and save this. Now one thing to remember when you're working with variables is dynamic variables have to be forcibly refreshed anytime a package is executed. So to do that I'm going to pull my ODI date variable into the package's execution path and I'm going to make sure that variable refreshes before we execute that archive inventory step. Once I have that I'm ready to save and a handy utility here you'll see this reorganize button uh, this will automatically put your steps in a more readable format and will space them accordingly and just keep them much, much easier to manage. Uh, so here I'm going to go ahead and execute this and if all goes well, the mappings I created on the first demo, the package I created on the second, and the variable refresh and file movement I created just now should all work as expected. You can see here the inventory file is nowhere to be found but it is moved to my archive folder and it has the date appended to the file name. I hope that you found this session hopeful. If you have any questions on this or would be interested in having a conversation with Alpine Consulting Partners in terms of what our company can do for your organization, I would encourage you to visit us at alpine-consulting.com or to send us an email at team at alpineconsulting.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.